live from New York City, it's The Cube at Big Data NYC 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, WAN Disco, with support from EMC, Mark Logic, and Teradata. With hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Kelly. Welcome back to New York City, everybody. And we are really pleased, we're going to dig into the networking uh, space a little bit. Dave Husak is here. He's the founder and CEO of Plexi, a company in, uh, in New Hampshire. And networking is a, a space that's obviously been dominated by Cisco. The company's got two thirds of the market and has for years. Networking's this big, top-down, hierarchical animal. Compute scales out, storage scales out. I think Plexi is a vision of making networking scale out. So David, welcome to theCUBE, thanks for coming on. Thank you Dave, I'm delighted to be here. So Glad what's the story, right? Like I said, compute, storage, the, everything's going scale out. The network has to go scale out, does it not? It does, it's the, it's the glue that, it's, it's the element that makes all those other things work. It's the, uh, uh, for high performance, scale out data, accessibility, uh, and computing. And uh, Hadoop is you know, obviously a, a fantastic use case, a fantastic expression of all that and networking is central to making that work. So I want to get into that, but before we do, tell us a little bit about Plexi, you know, how and why you started the company, and give us a little background on it. Sure, sure, I, I've been a networking guy my whole career, uh, way back when in the 90s, um, I worked at one of the companies that actually built and installed the first switches, Ethernet switches in the world, before we even need to, uh, knew to call them switches, <laughs> right? <laughs> And, uh, What'd you call them back then? Well, <laughs> uh, actually, it Boxes. was Ethernet Express is what our product was called. <laughs> okay. but, and back when, you know, uh, it was 10 megabit Ethernet and things were connected to FDDI backbones That was stuff. megabit, folks. <laughs> yeah, megabits, megabits. And electrons were way slower back then. Yeah. And uh, so at in some level, I helped create the problem <laughs> that we're now solving here, here at Plexi. That's which what is, entrepreneurs do. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you can, it, it keeps, the, keeps the cycle, it keeps the cycle rolling. But we have, uh, uh, basically with Plexi, um, you know, the inspiration was actually a lot of what you, the problems that you set up already, is that uh, recognizing that the way we've been building uh, switch networks, you know, hierarchically uh, for the last 20 years now, uh, you know, doesn't scale the same way applications and data is scaling now. The requirements have changed. And, you know, tw 20 years is a good run <laughs> for, a, for, a, for a technology and uh, it was time for something different. It, and, a lot, so the inspiration for Plexi, and we got started, you know, the idea sort of germinated and uh, developed back in 2010, raised our A round in 2011, uh, followed that up with a couple other, uh, uh, you know, uh, funding rounds in rapid succession, and, uh, you know, we're, we, uh, we think we have um, a take on networking for scale-out applications and Hadoop and, and big data and that uh, offers, you know, really compelling advantages compared to the alternative, which not only is Cisco, but is kind of everybody else, right? They all essentially build the, fundamentally the same kind of product, whether it's leaf spine, three traditional Cisco three-tier core switches and things, right? They all have this property that, you know, if you want to build wider, you have to build taller, right? And so it's fundamental geometry. You can't get away from that, right? Uh, we have a different way of wiring networks. We have a different way of orchestrating networks. We employ SDN as, as the, the methodology that glues all that together and, and delivers a level of automation and visibility and, and manageability uh, that the other guys can't touch. So I'm envisioning this sort of mesh, this fabric right. uh, that's sort of controlled by software. Yep. Um, I want to get into the big data and then, and then we can maybe get into your technology a little bit as well. I remember at Hadoop World in 2010, I didn't know much about Hadoop, I'd read a little bit about it, but when we started mm -hmm. to talk to some of the practitioners, Abi Mehta in particular, who's a guy we're going to have at our Capital Markets event tonight, said, listen, the fundamental is is you ship function, uh, you ship five megabytes of code and not a petabyte of data. Right. So, I, so I said, okay, well it means, it means tons of data, I get that, I, right. it, means, it means getting compute closer to the data, mm -hmm. I get that. What does it mean for networking, that fundamental notion of, of distribu di distributed computing, f function shipping, what does it mean for the network? It, it, it's all about agility. It's all about being able to place the computing uh, with respect to the data, with, res with respect to the resources it's going to consume in a way that ensures that it's making, you know, it has access to the data it needs, the data is replicated across the right kind of boundaries to ensure that the reliability and resiliency is there. It's ensuring that um, one of the things people don't talk about enough because it is a, a hugely important problem, especially as Hadoop and big data applications sort of proliferate, but security concerns. 
right? Uh, you know, in some cases, you know, payment card, healthcare, you know, there's a lot of applications out there where there are regulatory requirements that are, you know, problems that have been solved in sort of conventional data, you know, file systems and, and, and pro processing architectures, but also need to be, you know, enforced in, in big data installations as well. All of these things are mediated, you know, historically by, you know, network fun you know, big boxes of, of network functions and firewalls and filters and such um, that are static, right? And so... Moats that are dug around the castle. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. And uh, that's, you know, sort of counter purpose to uh, the way we kind of now think about uh, employing computing and accessing data in large sets that may be geographically distributed, maybe, you know, my data, some of my data, some of your data to actually accomplish a particular application. So the, the thing that ties all that together, you know, can't be static. You ha it has to be agile, it has to be fluid. And, you know, uh, networks need to evolve out of sort of a rigorous, you know, hierarchy that's defined, you know, networks of today are effectively defined by where the wires go, mm -hmm. right? That's no longer, you know, that's no longer optimal, it's no longer practical. Okay, so now, am when I right? Everything is, you know, when everything is virtualized and fluid on top of it. Right, okay, right, it becomes a mess and really, yeah. from a security standpoint, very hard. So how do you solve that problem, number one? And number two, how do you convince the Cisco certified engineer that they should take a chance on Plexi? Uh, uh, well, hopefully we're making it less of a chance <laughs> as the product, <laughs> we, you know, we are delivering our sort of second version, uh, you know, our, 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 of our products, you know, with a lot, like a lot of stars. So, so we're a little over three years old, right? right. And, uh, you know, we now have delivered Rev2, which is, as you know, for startups, Rev2 is the real, the real first product, right? The Rev1 beta products were, were the, the, the test the water kind of things, right? Uh, but it, first, yeah, it is less of a chance because we are, you know, fully interoperable. We've plugged into lots of people's networks, lots of environments, and so the ability to add Plexi capability, let Plexi agile networking capability to existing networks is easy. Um, I did actually worry at the beginning about the question you posed, right? Like. Because uh, you know, back then we were telling the you know sort of the big story, the you know what it's going to be like to have a network that works this way, that's software defined and agile, and and, and of course that, that narrative is immediately appealing to the CIOs, the application architects, the guys who, you know, the users of the network as opposed to the guys who build and operate the network, right? And I, and I did worry at the you know the beginning about, well, you know, we definitely have to engage the networking engineering community, you know, the guys with the CCIEs and JNCIEs, right. all those guys, and. Um, you know, they're going to be resistant to change because, you know, uh, they've been doing it. A lot of people have grown up in a, in, in a career where they've never known anything else. It's been 20 years since we've been basically doing things the same way, right? right. And they have huge investments in scripts and CLIs, you know, the, kind of the, the archaic ways that networks are built and operated generally today, right? But it's their house. It, it's, it is their house. And so you, you can't, you know, not in my house, right? You can't, you can't just expect them to, you know, to, to accept something you know new and different, um, what I didn't. So we started engaging, you know, like about you know as we were delivering our beta products into our first uh, first customers, you know, we were obviously had to engage, right? And what was striking was how how much of the frustration on the network user side was actually mirrored in the network engineering side, right? These guys knew they were behind. They knew that the guy who was orchestrating you know, vSphere and vCenter was, you know, can make thousands of servers, you know, spring into existence, vanish, copy themselves, dance across the networks, you know, with keystrokes and mouse clicks all day. And they were the guys that were still, you know, typing cryptic commands into CLIs at 3 a.m. on Sunday mornings, right? Which was, you know, the gap between that is just crazy, right? And they knew they were behind. They knew they, they didn't have the tools, they weren't getting the tools from their vendors that could allow them to keep up. So you're saying they're more receptive to it. They, they are expected. more, they are more receptive. I think the, you know, as we've refined our proposition and matured our products, it's now becoming, like I said, hopefully it's not as even scary anymore. It's actually the, the, the advantages outweigh the, you know, the risk of bringing in a Well, it helps too if you're 10x better. Are you 10x better? We're, we are more than, you know, depending <laughs> on all the axes, you know, we, we are more than, it's, it's just a different model. It's a, yeah. In fact, it's, it's uh, you can do things with Plexi you simply can't do with other guys, so that's infinitely better. <laughs> all right, David, we got, we got to leave it there, getting the, right. get the side. Thanks very much for coming on. Really Thank you. interesting, uh, and we'll be following you. Hope to see you back, uh, back in New England. Sweet. All, all right, right, keep it right there, you. everybody. We'll be back right after this word from Big Data NYC. This is theCUBE.